Hello everybody, welcome back to another NASCAR diecast review and today we're reviewing a truck. Yes, you heard me right. This is a truck diecast review. I don't know if I've done one before here on the channel, but if I'm but to, at least to me, I think this is the first one. But like I was gonna say, if I'm wrong, please let me know down below in the comments. So it's gonna be on Tate Fulgerman's 2021, number 12, Trager, um uh, Chevrolet Silverado for Young's Motorsports. Now that was such a chaotic race, and of course, it's the Talladega raced version. Like I was saying before, that was a crazy chaotic race where, like, only I don't know how many trucks finished, but at least you know, like, ten or twelve trucks finished their race. Most of them were back markers that finished the race, and one of them did win the race, being Tate Fogelman. We'll, we'll get to the diecast in a second. I still want to get Brandon Brown's, you know, Talladega race win diecast because. I really want it really badly, but I haven't gotten it yet for some reason. And knowing that Brandon Brown's career is possibly over and same with that team. They're shut down, I believe, by now uh, because uh, because their number of fonts with R, not R, FRS Racing. You know, the part-time Xfinity team, the number 96 team that, that um, has Kyle Weatherman drawing for them. You know, uh, the Chevrolet Camaro team. Um, if that's the only way I'll ever get a Brandon Brown diecast, unless if I get, you know, a donor diecast from, you know, um, from eBay or something, like a custom, that's what I meant by it. But I really want to get the official car. And can you blame me? I really want the diecast. But let's get back on this car. Let's go over on the details on the box. You got 2021 race winner. Can't believe this has been two years. Like two years since since Tate Fogelman won and we have not seen him since last year I don't know where he went but but I don't know I don't know if you if you watched the series or heard of this series but this guy made uh I forgot his used I forgot his channel name but he made a video about like 10 forgotten drivers who drove in this decade and I feel like five years from now if Tate Fogelman doesn't come back people might forget about this driver so this makes this diecast pretty unique and I recommend getting it if he does not come back I would recommend it getting it now because, uh, yeah, because it could get rare. It probably is rare now. I've had this die cast for over a year now, so I don't got anything to worry about, at least about a year to my knowledge. But you got Lana Racing, the official die cast of NASCAR. Um, you got Young's Motorsports. You got the render of the truck right there. Looks really cool. Standard finish. You got, you got Camping World. NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Now it's now the Craftsman NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. I'm glad to have. I'm glad I'm glad that that name came back to the series at least, at least like one of the old school names. All we got to do is now is hope for the Bush Bush Beer to come back to Xfinity. And of course, with Winston, you know Winston cigarettes are never going to come back to the Cup Series, but we can only imagine in our brains and only wish. We can only dream it in our in our minds. Let's just be real. You got 124 scale race truck, limited edition adult collectible. You got action race collectible. You got the winner sticker right there, raced version. Like how I, I miss these type of boxes where there's some coloring to it. Man. You go right here. Um, you got Tate Fogelman, uh, tw number 12, tro uh, Traeger. I think that's what it says. Uh, um, grills. Uh, Talladega win. I didn't say grills earlier. Really, I just said Traeger. I don't know how to say that. I'm sorry. Um, 2021 Silverado. One out of um, 824 to be produced. I think that's what it says. You got the numbers right there. Standard finish. Winner sticker. Winner sticker there again. NASCAR Cable World Truck Series. Uh, action Racing Collectible. Still the choice of champions. Yeah, you can see that I've had this box for a while. I've had this die cast too. Like the tail end where you open up from to get the die cast out. Um, you got the same stuff at the back. Don't need to repeat myself. You got um, uh, the the QR code right there. Um, you got all that stuff right there too. It says be sure to register your car's D and N T M at www.lionelgarage.com. You got a slash or, or dash twenty one or hyphen twenty one. You go under the car and you got your all copyright and such from. General Motors, Ford, Toyota, and the teams and sponsors. Now let's bring in the die cast as we gotta get this die, this out of the, this um box out of the view, out of the way. Here it is, right here. 
Very cool looking truck. Lionel did a hell of a good job making this race version. And I, I made a post earlier today. I don't know if you saw it. I said that, um, uh, uh, that, you know, the, that I personally think the 124 diecast nowadays are, are personally overrated. But the race versions like this one and autograph version, I'll just bring in, I'll just bring in one as an example. I'm talking about the autograph. And this is, this is one of my most, most priced possessions. Let me move this to the side a little bit. Um. It's Dale Jr.'s, Dale and Hart Jr.'s, you know, signed Sundrop Citrus Soda, um, 2022 late model die cast. As you can see, as I bumped in the camera, look at that. So, anything in my opinion that has to do with, you know, signed die cast or raced version for 124, they're, they're, they're worth collecting. Let's just be honest. Maybe the color chrome, maybe the color chrome, maybe the color chrome too. In the liquid color but that's not really my thing i just want to get you know the regular standard version so there's the die cast as we're gonna do a 360 of it of course it's still on its base looks really awesome and and i think people jinxed young's motorsports on twitter because they someone said that they're gonna win again because they've won every two years at Talladega, but that wasn't the case this year. So, and I even told them they jinxed it. It was on Twitter. But two surprise winners in within two years to both Spencer Boyd. I can't, I still can't believe that guy managed to win a race because that guy has come nowhere close since then. And unfortunately, it's due to the probably the equipment he's in. And that he's that he never really got a different shot at a different other truck equipment. Sure, he's gotten some Xfinity. Uh, he's gotten an Xfinity chance with, you know, um, I don't know if this team still exists, Means Motorsports. I think the team's shut down by now, which is unfortunate, but that he drove for them in 2021. Ironically, the same year Tate Fugelman won. So we're going to go on to the card, or let's just show off the sticker first. Here it is, or I got it upside down, or is that, was that the right way? I don't know. There's a sticker anyways. Now let's go on with the card. It is bent because I've had this for a while. I believe it was sitting out. So my apologies about that. You got a picture of Tate Fogelman holding or with the trophy beside it. His, his outfit and you got a picture or a render of the truck in victory lane with the crew, cameraman, and maybe even paparazzis. You got Talladega, Tate Fogelman, Chevy, Chevy Silverado 250 winner. Uh, Talladega, Alabama, October 2nd, 2021. Can't believe it's been two years. I can't believe it still. You got um, time of race, two hours and six, uh, two hours, six minutes and 17 seconds. Start position, 20, 20th. Uh, total laps, 99, 263.35 miles. Number of cautions, six or 29 laps. That's, uh, wow, that's a lot of cautions. I knew this race was chaotic. Laps led by winner, of course, the last lap. We'll get to more of how he won that race in a second. And then, of course, it's the margin of victory, um, 0 0.5, 0 0.052 seconds. You got, of course, everything else right down here, race version, and, of course, that. So, yeah, let's bring in back the die cast. Now, getting to how he won that race, he, he kind of dumped John Hunter Nemechek. Like, coming to the final turn, he was all over Nemechek's back bumper, rear end and just just turned him out he just spun him out and and you want to know who he beat like this is probably something you'll never see again in nascar because it's so random i never thought these two would finish one two in a race that's that's some meme worthy stuff he beat tyler hill of all people yeah tyler hill timmy hill's brother both tay fogelman and tyler hill finished one two and i believe I believe, I don't know, I know Spencer Boyd got a top 10 that race, but I think also Keith McGee, I think that's his name, driving from the Ream Brothers Racing, and and Corey Roper got top 10s too, so that's that's freaking hilarious. That, that race was such a chaotic one at that, I'm telling you, it was that chaotic, so yeah, let's get on with the car. <laughs> love the paint scheme, love the camouflage on these die casts. You got, um... Camping World right there. It's no longer Camping World. It's now Craftsman. You got, you know, detail to the windshield right there. You got Trager, uh, wood-fired grills. You got the logo of the mountains and and the hills in the background. It looks really cool. 
you got some tape towards the front end. That's because Tate Fulgerman, uh, right here, Tate Fulgerman was involved in that first huge big one uh, where um, Johnny Sauter, I believe, and Austin Hill made a, or Zane Smith made like a bad block and which caused the big one or spun one of them out. I don't know. That, I don't know if that block stuff was there on the hood before, but I don't know. It could, it could just be taped, just like I said. You got Chevrolet Bowtie, tie, um, Silverado. You got you cannot see twelve right there because it's covered up by tape. Um, you got uh, you got um, you got what's left of Young's Motorsports. You got the headlights. You got Sunoco Simpson. And this is where it gets juicy. This is where it gets really good. Um, you got Goodyear. Um, look at these tires. And I watched another. I watched another review. And if you take this diecast out of the base and you roll the car, there's there's like a suspension issue with the car. I, that's that's in the real car. Like the car would roll weird and stuff. Like I love that feature Lionel added to these to race to win diecast. Looks really cool. These tires all shredded up. I mean, look at that. That's, that's beautiful. You got NASCAR race truck, camping world truck series, NASCAR camping world truck series, Kemetic. What does that say? Um, something, I don't know. I, I got to get my eyes checked. Comrade or Camrad? I don't know. Holly. Um, at AIM? I don't know what that says. Tilton? Telecon or Talid? Um, ARP? What? Is, what? Um, XC? And Tokes, I have no idea that any of these sponsors, but then this is where he hit the wall. Like, you fought AJ Allmendinger's Bristol win from that same year, and Xfinity was, was brutal and wild. Well, well, when Tate Fogelman spun John Hardy Machek out, he, Tyler Hill made contact with, with, you know, Tate right here in the car, right around here. As you can see, there's like a tire mark around here, I believe there is. Yeah, there is, I believe. And Tate Fogelman went down the track, and he hit the wall. Like, he went, like... Like that in the wall, bounced off of it and came to abrupt stop, like after sliding a few feet, and that's how he won the race. I love how Lionel added that detail to this car. Um, personally, um, I wish they they would do more with the damage, but it looks still accurate. I wish they could be able to you know cut off some of the car to make it actually look cool, like. They kind of did that with the Larson Phoenix win, where they bent it a little back, but they don't. Because it apparently costs money. Which sucks. But you got all that detail right there. Looks really awesome. The wall marks. The, the damage. Just Oh this car looks so cool. Imagine how cool it would have been in 164. Ooh that thing would have looked beautiful. Unfortunately they didn't offer it in 164. You got uh, Fogelman or just Tate Fogelman. Or, right? or you got Tate Fogelman or just Fogelman right there. You got more like this camel. Like going across the front end of the splitter. Now to the side where it becomes black. And. Some other stuff. Um, goes up on the roof. We'll get to more of that in a second. You got Chevrolet or you got, yeah, Chevrolet. Um, you got Young's and Motorsports right there. What does that say? Um, solid. Um, Alga what? I have no idea. And you got more of the camouflage on. You know, the beat pillar. You got Benel. The fuel life or fuel life, you got real tree. That's cool to see them on a winning truck or a winning car again. I don't think they've ever won a race with Kevin Harvick. I, I could be mistaken. The foul life or something. You got, I believe, American flag right there. Federal provider jargon. What does that say? Uh, you got like a moose or a bull like horns in the face. You got more scrapes back there, and you got more right here. What does that say? American Almond beef or something. I don't know. You got the you got the American ethanol ring right there. Looks really cool. You got Young's Motorsports on you know the spoiler. So yeah, that's you got more scrape marks across the sponsors. Looks really cool. And of course there's you know the damage where I was where I was telling you about. Like he made some contact with a car that came down onto him. And look at these tires. You still got some yellow outline to them, but barely any. They're bare. They're just about gone. And you got like a you got like um a green or like a tire mark right there, scrape mark, and you got some more back here. 
Got the exhaust pipes too. I don't even know if you see it on this side. You know, you can't. It's all covered up due to like dirt. Not dirt, like, you know, to like destruction, baby. <laughs> and you got the number 12 there again. But this time you can actually can see it and all these sponsors because that wasn't the side that hit the hit the wall for once. So, yeah. Let's go to the back end of the truck. Basically the same thing. You also got on a pillar too, just like on this side of the car. As you also can see, the window net. I really wish they would use the, you know, fabric window net. Not just these plastic window nets for the Xfinity and truck die cast. I wish they would get get them. I wish they'd get the cup or make the own fabric window nets for the truck and Xfinity die cast like the cup die cast to have. That's why I personally prefer the, one six, the 124 cup uh, die cast. You go back here to like the tail end of the car. And man, this from like a restart because of how chaotic it was. I think it got rear ended or got hit in the back bumper so hard that it got shoved. I got I got shoved in, and you could see a lot of scrape marks and tape. You got Silverado. You got the tail lights. You got the spoiler pivots. Um, this says Ben dead. I don't know what that says. You got the Chevrolet Bovatai. Like I said, the tail lights. And you go to the bed cover of the car. Um, you got um. Uh, Chevrolet uh, C, no, S-I-C. You got like the little, you know, thing for it. Uh, first for Hunters. And then, of course, you got all like, like, I don't know what those are called. What are those f orange things called? Um, Like, you know, for the, the bed cover thing to keep it down. I guess that's what that is. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that much about the truck cars or the trucks. I know more about Cup. You got Fogelman because, you know, I keep more attention to it. But like I said, you got Fogelman. And one cool feature that I love that how Lionel added this, because look, I don't know if you can see it. But look, on like the, on, you know, the things that hold up, you know, the, the, the window, I forgot what they're called, the levers or something. There's a Chevrolet logo on them. I know it's hard to see, but can you see it now? There's a Chevrolet bow tie Chevrolet right there. And it's the same thing on the other side. I wish you'd do that with the 164s too. That'd be so awesome. Is there even a rear TV camera? I don't know. I don't think there is. But there is a TV Ford camera in front. You got that. The white camera. You got the number 12 right there. And you got also the rear brake light. And as always, let's take a look in the interior of the car. Got the roll bar right in there. You got the seat. Got like the hands device around the driver. You got the steering wheel. Look at that. Gets like some cool stuff right here. The DIN code is um C7. Two one. What's that say? Um, no, um, C721113, one, one, I think it says, um, 1TBGTU XXX, oh boy, ooh, UUXXX, um, zero, zero, um, two, three, uh, no, 2923. Okay. And got all the dash right there. The roll bar, too. I don't think the trucks have one, but really cool detail. Really, really cool stuff. Even got, you know, the throttle right there. If you can see that. The steering wheel, too. Um, Yeah, there's the throttle. And I think this truck even has like a window wiper or something. It's really cool. Yeah, and of course you can also see um you can also see some more dirt on this side because this car is pretty dirty. Got some more like residue on the side and oh there's even more sponsors that I didn't even see. <laughs> yeah. Um you got um factory mechanic wear and what does that say? I have no idea. Um Cam, come, I don't know. Uh, 
Uh, not not all these reviews are perfect. Let's just keep that in mind. It's a really cool looking truck, and of course, if you want to see below. You can even though it's on a base, and this car doesn't have any you know opening roof hatches or doesn't have an opening hood. I like the. The Xfinity cars don't have um, the opening roof hatches. Of course, you can see more dirt all across like the hood, the front end of the car, the roof, and the bed cover. They don't have that. But but for the Xfinity cars, the hood can open up, so that's a little odd. And there's more tape right here. Just the tape, the damage, the, the, the destroyed shredded wheels, and of course the caved-in bumper, just, and even like some of the stuff over here, just... Oh my goodness, this die cast is so cool. So, do I recommend this die cast? As, as I'm just going to bring this over back over here. Of course I do. I 100% you know, recommend this die cast. If you haven't got it yet, I don't know what you're doing. Because this die cast, I don't know if it's rare. I don't know if it's still available where you can get it. But... If you haven't got it yet, probably your best bet is on eBay or something. Let's hope that's not the case. But I've had this diecast for a while now. I'm really happy to have it. It's such an awesome looking car. Or awesome looking truck, might I, I should say. And, excuse me. I 100% recommend it. I do. I really do. Not only is it, you know, a really random, obscure back marker driver and Backmarker team and driver win, but it's also you haven't seen this driver since 2022, at least a year by now. Last time we saw Tate Fogelman, he's driving for On Point Motorsports in the number 30 Toyota Tundra. Which ironically, a diecast for that team actually got made in the same year with Denny Bone. You know, Michael Waltrip, uh, 1988 or 1989 throwback diecast. So, as we're gonna do, just one more look at the car. Yeah, I I recommend you get this die cast. Wish they made a 164 just like the Brandon Brown car. Like, I want to get the Brandon Brown car next. I really do for like the next 124 or two. I really want to get it because that car, it's probably going to get rare. And I know it is because it's Brandon Brown, baby. Uh, that's the only way you can get one of his die casts now. That's his only die cast ever to be made, ever to be made, unless if you get a custom off of eBay or Amazon or Kijiji or Etsy or any any others, uh, any other of those, of those you know, um, uh, selling websites or something. I don't know, but either way, it's gonna do it for this video. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Comment down below what you think about this diecast. Like I said, do you have it or not? I'll try to do more diecast reviews. It's been a while. The last one I made was the Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 164, you know, Daytona 500 winning car from for JT for JTG for JTG Doty Racing, as you know, the Kroger Cottonelle, you know, Chevrolet Chevrolet Camaro number 47 race to win for the Daytona 500. <coughs> Excuse me from this year. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one, y'all. Peace out.